A Missouri wife and mother is found murdered with an ominous message written in blood on her corpse. Investigators use a trail of incriminating texts to track down the alleged killer, her estranged husband. I think he's just about handed on a silver platter. Uh, the fact that he's a murderer, he knows what he did, and he doesn't even seem to feel guilty. As a clinical psychologist, that's what it looks like pretty much loud and clear to me. While responding to a welfare call on September 22nd, Kansas City Police made a gruesome discovery. 29-year-old Ashley Earhart was found strangled and stabbed to death. Written on her leg in blood, the word wonder. Also, the last name of her estranged husband, 31-year-old John Wonder. Clinical psychologist Dr. Chloe Carmichael tells Law & Crime Network that blood-written word was likely a message from the killer. It certainly, as a psychologist, did stand out to me, and it seems like one of the first things that would come to mind for me as a psychologist, especially given that this was a man who had just murdered his own wife, and I believe the mother of his children, that there's a sense of ownership. He's literally writing his name. He wants there to be um, a, a connection and a sense of ownership with him, even though he's taken this terrible step of ending her life, but he doesn't want her to just disappear. He wants her to be forever marked as his, almost like a piece of property. Carmichael says the word likely meant wonder was branding Earhart as his property. Well, as his own last name, he might have spent his whole life, you know, with associations to that word wonder. Certainly it can mean curiosity. It can also mean awe and amazement. It can mean all kinds of things. But I think what it meant most certainly um, is his last name. And there is a way of, of marking and naming this woman literally with his own name and certainly whatever associations that he might have to it. But there is a narcissistic quality about almost branding in blood this woman with his name that she'll be forever marked with this one word at least in his mind that this was literally his property Earhart and wonder were married in 2019 and shared two children ages two and five together but when neither showed up to work on september 22nd their co-workers contacted police Earhart's mother later told investigators Wonder had dropped the kids off at her house, but instead of coming inside, he left the kids on the front porch. It was Earhart's father who found her lifeless body with a belt wrapped around her neck and puncture wounds to the left side of her body. And I don't believe that she took his last name. I thought that was interesting that they were married and they appeared to have children together, that the children had his last name, um, but that she did not. And I don't know whatever conversations they may have had about that. And again, obviously, it's no justification. But on some level, that he would choose in death to put his name literally upon her. Um, I, I certainly look at that as, as a form of, of possession and a form of marking literally in blood uh, his own name, in, which is usually a way of indicating your property. Later, Wonder allegedly sent incriminating messages to his sister and friend. One message read, quote, Hey kiddo, sorry about the mess. It's way easier and more satisfying than you can imagine. See you around. It obviously conveys a total lack of remorse, and it also indicates on some level that there was a certain amount of pleasure and a certain amount of planning that he obviously had been imagining it. As you pointed out, he said it's more satisfying and easier than you could have imagined. So it's something he was thinking about and, and planning about that he had a certain amount of intention about. And I don't, so far, I haven't seen anything as far as him seeking any type of therapy or acknowledging that he'd been struggling with any of these types of thoughts. It appears more that he was just simply having these thoughts and essentially working himself up to taking action. And then when he did take action, he appears to have felt no remorse and in fact seems almost celebratory. Another message read, quote, still haven't cried, still feel nothing, no more anxiety though, that's a plus. Certainly he has a personality disorder. <laughs> I mean, I shouldn't say certainly, obviously I've never evaluated him, but it, it looks to me like a personality disorder. 
um, of, of a extreme narcissism that he's thinking about himself, that he's thinking about, you know, that he hasn't cried. He's not even thinking apparently about his children and what it's going to be for those children to live, you know, their life without, without their mother. Um, and, and he's saying anxiety is gone. That's a plus though. He says it to me, it sounds almost like a quip, right? It's, it's, it's such a, um, kind of a casual way, almost to the point of being ironic. Oh, anxiety's lower. That's a plus, you know, um, when you're talking about literally having just killed your wife and the mother of your children, um, there's, there's just such an extreme form of narcissism and self-absorption there that it's almost like he's making a joke about that when he says, oh, anxiety is lower, that's a plus, where he's literally murdered his wife in their own home together. Um, there's, there's just such a callousness that I see in that. Wonder was ultimately arrested hundreds of miles from Kansas City in Cherry County, Nebraska. Prior to his arrest, he messaged a friend writing, quote, to honor her, I will not go out by a gunshot suicide by cop, but by hopefully a similar fate to Ashley. In the same messages, Wonder said he believed he'd soon be caught. As a clinical psychologist, I would also note that he seemed completely oriented to time, place, and person. Again, so carving his name on her, he knows who he is, he knows who she is. He has an awareness of right and wrong in the sense that he's saying, oh, soon they'll be coming to arrest me. He clearly knows that he's done something wrong and he knows where he is. So I personally will be pretty upset if I see him carry off some kind of an insanity defense because I think it's high time that we started taking a lot more personal responsibility um, for our own good as well as for the good of society. At the time of her murder, Earhart and Wonder were living together but going through a divorce. She'd been planning to move out on October 1st, just days after her body was found. When a woman is about to leave an abuser, that is the most dangerous time as far as him taking matters into his own hands and, and really killing her or in some way rendering it impossible for her to leave. Um, and so I do find it really interesting that at this time of, of her getting ready to finalize and complete the divorce by moving out, that that's when he decides to kill her, not only to kill her, but literally to write his last name on her body, which of course the woman taking the man's last name is traditionally the way that, that they mark that partnership and that um, merging of identities socially and legally. And the fact that he chose to do that in blood as his final act of ending her life, I do think is certainly important when we recognize that she was about to leave the, the marriage fully by leaving the home. Carmichael says an insanity defense may be a difficult route for Wonder to take. Again, I really hope he does not try to plead any kind of an insanity defense. Um, in addition to the other ways I already mentioned, where I think it shows he knew perfectly well what he was doing, he knew right from wrong. He also was what we call future oriented. So he was starting to think ahead about, you know, what would he like to do next or what might happen to him next, which to me again suggests a level of coherency. And, you know, for the sake of, of really of women everywhere, I would, I think that he needs to be held accountable for the, for the social health of society. But it's still the message written in blood that stands out most. Well, I don't think that murderers often use blood to write their message, right? Because murderers who are truly in cold blood, they're, you know, often thinking hyper rationally about how to not get caught, how to not leave their DNA. They wouldn't, you know, want to necessarily get a bunch of their victims' blood all over themselves and things like that. What that really suggests to me um, is that this is really a crime of passion, right? That that he wanted he wanted her her blood on his hands, literally, and that he used it then to write his name on her body. Wonder is now charged with first degree murder. He's being held in Cherry County, Nebraska on $1 million cash bond. He waived his right to extradition, but there's no word yet when he'll be transported back to Missouri. Reporting for Long Crime Network, I'm Sierra Gillespie.